Hi everybody, welcome back to Rich Reviews and today you join us back in our garage for number four in our winter workshop series. And today we're replacing the hydraulic tunnel cover hydraulic ram. So this part in effect. Long, long, long story short, as I've already detailed before in previous videos, we got an intermittent situation during the summer period whereby the roof mechanism wasn't latching properly because it didn't sense properly um, with the Hall Effect sensors, which are these, which I've already explained for previously, so check my previous videos for a full explanation, um, where the Hall Effect sensors weren't aligning with a magnet that's here. In effect, the ECU for the roof didn't th didn't realize or didn't think that the roof tunnel cover was closed and therefore it was going into a continual trying to latch process and then default into, into a state where it's saying the roof isn't closed properly please close the roof properly and that was um, I did a load of research found out how all this roof mechanism works etc um, and then it resolved down to the fact that this wasn't being pulled down far enough and it was due to this ram the internal seals being worn and the oil, the hydraulic oil going past the seals internally and therefore sometimes this ram not closing properly. That's why I've got these clips on here. Again, I explained this previously to be able to tell which ram was at fault and pre another assessment I did as well with regards to which Hall Effect sensor was reading correctly. So I need to change this ram. You, you replace these rams with um, what's called a hydraulic cylinder kit. Um, is there's another name for it, a cylinder hydraulic cylinder roof replacement kit or something um, cylinder repair kit I think it's called but in effect you buy two of these now Ferrari recommend that you replace these in a pair because there's one the, over the other side as well there's two for the tunnel cover and two for the roof mechanism so if you look down there there's another two down here as well of a slightly different type I believe but they actually haul the roof down fold it back down and haul the roof back up again but these are for the tunnel cover and they recommend replacing these as a pair because usually if one fails then the other one's likely to fail but because I'm doing it and I'm not gonna um, overkill the job I'm gonna replace one at a time as they fail so this one's failed I know that one is fine so why replace it if it isn't failed yet I've got a spare one so I can replace that one when I need to it seems to be quite a simple job but I'm learning as I go so you're going to be learning as I go as well. Now I've done some research on this and it seems to be quite simple to replace as a big black art from the dealerships oh you know it's quite a job to bleed these and takes a long time and all this sort of thing. From the research I've done you replace the hydraulic ram and you there's retainers here which hold this ball joint hold this cup onto the ball joint and this spring is a spring mechanism so you reduce the spring tension by doing that and that enables the cup to open and for you to lift the cup off. Now I've already done it on this side so I know that works. I've removed the retaining spring and this will now just pull off and I've got this one half off here as well and you can see how I've lifted the spring off on this cup part of the ball joint and that's enabled me to partly pull this ball joint off. So I've done that by leveraging, leveraging this small screwdriver into the back of the spring clip to enable that to partly pull out for me to then partly lever out with a screwdriver but very gently with a screwdriver and I've used a cloth behind here as well to make sure I don't mark or damage this panel this part of this bracket system and I've levered off the hydraulic ram so if you just watch now I'll just lever it, the rest of it off there you go. You've got retainers here for the hydraulic pipe work and that's just so that these pipe work retain in those areas. And you've got this which is a, a clamp. This is called a clamp in the Ferrari parts, parts bin in the Ferrari parts catalogue. And this is just a tie clip. But that's just a retainer just to hold the hydraulic pipe um, to the cylinder. It's just a locator. It's not for any strength bearing part. The hydraulic rams in themselves aren't screwed to the bodywork at all. They're held in place purely by these clamp springs, by, these, by this ball and cut mechanism on both sides. And this is, they are both handed as well. By that I mean that this is for what's called the near side. So this is the left hand side version. And the other side has this cup pointing that way. That's the only difference. And these are fixed, these back cups. This obviously will rotate because it has to, because it's on a ram. Um, but this is fixed, so that has to, they have to be handed. So let's get on with the job. First of all, I need to get a pair of cutters, which I haven't got here, so 
hold on for a second. I should say as well that I've taken a little video clip of this and taken photographs as well. So I know exactly where everything goes back. Again, just in case I know by memory as well, it's not the, it's not the hardest, it's not the hardest piece of work on your memory to be able to remember how it goes. But just in case, taking loads of photographs just to make sure. What I'm gonna do now is just cut this tie clip, obviously making sure you don't cut the hydraulic pipe. That's vitally important. And again, this is just a tie clip. They call it a clamp, but it's just a tie clip. And that just secures that piece of pipe work to the clamp. Now you've got to be careful with these holders here, with these pipe retainers, because you've got to be careful you don't damage the pipe work, but they are designed in such a way that you have to push the clamps to one side to be able to release the pipe. And they do that so that they will hold the pipe in place. So you've just got to gently ease those pieces of rubber back so you can then get the pipe work out. So now we have the hydraulic ram out. So all we need to do now is just take out these little clips, these little circlips, they hold the pipe work in. We need to take those circlips out and we need to put in new rubber seals. This is very important. You must not forget these rubber seals. I'm going to put it on the back of my phone there. So, whoops, <laughs> just as I say that, they roll off, just so you can see. And I've got some new circlips here. And they're not circular circlips, uh, they're rectangular. So the hardest job we've got now is taking off these circlips off these pipes at the moment, obviously without damaging them because we need to reuse the pipe work. So in case we get any fluid leakage, I've obviously put my cloths down here, the usual thing, and I've wrapped the cloth right down the back so that if any circlips ping off, it's gonna fall into this cloth. It's not gonna go all the way down the back end and I'm gonna lose a circlip and I'm gonna have a nightmare and all that hell's rest of it. Preventative maintenance again. And I've got a little plastic bowl here to capture any hydraulic fluid that might leak out of this pipe work. Now what I'm gonna try and do best laid plans of mice and men and all that. I'm going to try and transfer the pipe individually on each one so that um, we're going to mitigate any issues with too much loss. Um, but in doing so, I need to put obviously a new seal in. So it may not be as straightforward as that. But first of all, I have to get this little circlip off. So I'm going to leverage in a little thin screwdriver to try and get this circlip out, see? And that's, remove that circlip. I just use a pair of snipe nose pliers now and put that to one side. I don't want to reuse that. And I'm just gonna take the other one out as well so that we can have it to a state where we're in the same situation with both pipes. If you're enjoying the video so far, please give the video a thumbs up, very important for our channel. And if you like our style of content, please think about subscribing. Now back to the video. Now there's a little gap in the corner of these clips and that's where you need to get a very, very thin bladed screwdriver into the little gaps in the corners. I've just pulled this one out slightly. Remember, I'm not reusing this ram and I'm not reusing these clips. So you can damage the clips and you can damage the ram, but you mustn't damage these pipe works, these pieces of pipe work. I'm just gonna pull this clip out now and put that my old store location. And again, of course, we've got a, a mat on the side of the car as well to protect the car. The new ram comes with caps to prevent any dirt ingress into the holes. Into, so you don't want any, obviously, any muck going in. So I'm just gonna take one off at a time, due diligence, and I'm just gonna check out how these seals locate. This seal should fit in as it does there. So I've just popped my seal in, ready for transferring the clamp over. Now if the seal is attached to this pipe work, I'm gonna to have to be careful as so as I don't transfer the old seal. Now I don't know how easy, in actual fact, very easy is the answer to that. I was gonna say, I don't know how easy this is gonna come out. As you can see, we've got the old seal in there. We've got no loss of fluid, which is brilliant. But then part of what happens, that is logical, because part of what happens when you, you have the roof partly open 
as I've detailed before, you get that beeping because the ECU, the roof ECU says the roof isn't fully closed properly, make sure you close the roof. And it beeps, 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 beeps. And it goes into a timeout state after a certain period of time, whereby then the hydraulic system releases the pressure in the system. Um, so it's not, so it doesn't damage the system. And that's the clicking you get. So it's not damaging the system. What the What is happening is that the roof hydraulic system is releasing the pressure in all the hydraulic lines. And that's logical, therefore, that there isn't any oil squirting out because the, the fluid should have come back into the reservoir. Therefore, it should have released. The reservoir, by the way, is, is behind this section. I'll, I'll show you that a bit later on. So it looks like, again, it's going to be a lot easier than I thought. So to be honest, what I can do is just pull both pipes out. So I pulled the other one out now as well. There's the old ram. Old seals in both got to be careful because the oil will leak out of this because these have got hydraulic fluid and it's not going to pull the fluid out of the wheel cylinders so again cloths at the ready to make sure we haven't got any leakage and we'll put on the old caps that we had and make sure you don't push this round back in by the way because you push that round back in it's going to and squirt out a load of hydraulic fluid probably right into your eye so i'm going to put the old covers that i had off the old sorry off the new hydraulic ram onto the old one to prevent any fluid loss we put that to one side clean our hands then not forgetting to put in the other new little little seal in there that's very important what you should do is just put a little bit of hydraulic fluid around the seal and I've just done that and it just helps the seal bed in it's not not ideal I haven't got any spare hydraulic fluid I've tried to get some but it's no problem getting the fluid I can get it from Maranello parts but getting a delivery company getting a parcel delivery company to, to deliver fluids is a nightmare because of it's classed as an unsafe fluid an unsafe product so what I'm doing now is just pushing the pipe in here which I've done there I'm going to do the back one in a minute we've now got to put this circlip on here and I'm just going to use a pair of pliers just to push this circlip back in and push the pipe work down at the same time and then you can see this pipe won't come out because it's now retained in place and the second one is just the same we've got the pipe there if, hopefully you can see that okay obviously this pipe is quite short here so I'm just going to put the pipe in put a bit of fluid around the seal so I'm just locating the seal in there properly because it didn't seem to be seated in there properly so if you're not sure take it out and put it back in again which is what I've done what I'll do now is just put some more fluid around there right so we've got the new seal in there and we've got the new pipe in there i'm just going to put a new clip on so we've got the new clip on we've got the new ram connected hydraulically we've got the new pipes transferred over to the new ram we need to do now just have a little bit of a clean up where there's been a little bit of fluid that's gone around the pipe work let's do a double check again you know i like my double checks push the clip in to make it fully seated make sure it's fully seated and do that again on this side which it is and now we're ready to refit the clamp now the clamps the cups on the hydraulic cylinder should just push on because they've got an interference fit with a spring but the spring will open up the spring will allow the cup to open up for the ram to be able to push back on so it should just locate i shouldn't have to alleviate the pressure with the spring it should just clip back on so let's just see if that is indeed the case yep it is <laughs> just put this ram out now fully extend it and there you go how easy is that to clip the rams back on Doddle. Now all we need to do is retain our pipe work back in again. So the lower, the, the shorter pipe was on the bottom clamp. So I've just pushed that back in and the other one pushed back in again. So both of those are nicely retained back in again. And 
I'm just going to now run the clip back in again. I'm just going to check the photographs that I took, see exactly where the pipe work is, or should be rather, where the pipes were clipped in. You've got the shorter one on the bottom, and the other one, the, the longer one overlaid over the top in the corner. So everything is exactly as it was. There's the clip, which is about 50%, about halfway along, 50% along the actual cylinder part of the ram. So that's where I'll put the tie clip. And you can even see which way the tie clip was. So I can even do it back OEM, so it's exactly the same. So the tie clip we're gonna put back in again. All right, so tie clip in place. Just cut it off, the remaining part. It's locating that ram nicely in place. That's it, job done. So before I cycled the roof, what I've done is I've just done a quick double check. You know how I like my double checks or triple checks. I've just gone through and I've just checked to make sure that these pipes are properly connected as I knew they were anyway, but just to make doubly sure. And I've made sure that these cups are properly connected to the, to the ball joints on the roof mechanism and just made sure we've got everything cleared away from here. So there's no obstructions, no obstructions here at all. I've moved this mat down obviously, so it's not gonna foul the mechanism when the roof tries to close. And because I've got this automated roof mechanism on my car, I can now just use the remote to close it. So I have to lock the car first of all, wait a few seconds and then operate the roof. Now, because we're gonna move the roof both ways, I need to take that off as well. Fingers crossed, it should close without any issue. So that's the roof hydraulic cylinder fitted, fairly easy to do. The next stage is to bleed the roof hydraulic system. And we're gonna cover that off in our next workshop where we go through step-by-step step how to bleed the roof hydraulic system.